You know, I wasn't sure I was going to do this test, but I had a few of you out there ask for it. So, so I did it. So in a previous video, previous, previous video, we put the M1 MacBook Pro 8 gig version up against the 2019 i9 16 inch MacBook Pro with 8 gigs of video memory and 32 gigs of system memory. And um, the M1 just kind of had its way with it, just to be nice. It, it, it just wiped the floor with it, which was shocking. And we put it through some standard benchmark tests, but we also put it through a pretty heavy Final Cut render, which was using mixed 4K footage, so 4K from different cameras different frame rates, uh, all exported out, and it was a long clip, and that long clip, or long timeline, was about 22, between 22 and 23 minutes. And the purpose was that you and I, a lot of times, are gonna be working on these computers, and the computers will have a tendency to heat up. And if there's gonna be any thermal throttling, that will happen over a long period of time. So doing a one minute test or a two minute test or even a five minute test doesn't give a machine enough time to heat up where we start to see the processors throttle to help with their cooling. And that's where the M1 just dominated, where the i9 had so much heating issues that the processor just throttled so much that it slowed right down. So you guys asked for an iMac versus M1. So, so I did it, it's happening. And, and that's coming up right now, right now. Okay, so it's been done already. I did it all this morning and I've got all the results kind of here and I've added it to the results that were taken from the M1 versus uh, MacBook Intel so that you can see it. Now, one of the biggest bonuses of the iMac is that it is running a current generation, uh, or a 10th generation, sorry, i7 processor, but it's in a much bigger chassis, which means that its cooling is way better and it can keep those chips a lot cooler so that they run at a bigger speed. The other bonus is the machine that we're testing against, not that it should have too big of an issue with these tests, is it is running 64 gigs of RAM, so that's a huge amount of RAM, but I think the biggest thing or benefit of it with the i7 is its ability to, to hyper-thread. So that eight cores actually threads as if it was 16 cores, if I'm getting that right. So you really see it in any kind of program that can use all those multi-cores or that hyper-threading really kick in, and we saw that here. So right now, in single core, you'll see it in single core results, the M1 is actually faster. When it comes into multi-core, that's where we see that Intel i7 with those extra threads start to pull ahead a bit. So we'll, we'll look at a few of these benchmarks right here. The first one we did was a Blackmagic disk speed test. And again, the higher number is gonna be better. So as you can see here, the 2020 iMac and the MacBook Pro i9, so they both kind of came out very close to each other in time, uh, really, really close in regards to their speeds. We're looking at, you know, 2234 for write and 2314 for read on the iMac versus 2130 and 2490 on the i9. The MacBook Pro M1 though, actually considerably faster with about 2800 for read and write. So we want that higher number, which means that our disk is gonna be able to write faster, gonna be able to read faster, get all our data moving around for copying large files, et cetera, et cetera. This is gonna be uh, a little bit of a, an asset, again, for that new Mac Pro M1. Are the majority of us gonna really notice a big difference in those speeds? Uh, probably not too much, but higher is better, so it wins. Continuing on, we start to get into the benchmarks. So the first one we did was Geekbench CPU benchmark. So Geekbench breaks it down into a CPU benchmark and then into a compute benchmark. So again, if you look at these here, 2020, really the 2020 iMac, a uh, single core beat out the i9. So we are seeing again that 
there probably was some throttling in the MacBook. And the i9 is a ninth generation versus the i7 in the iMac, which is a 10th generation. So that iMac i7 actually in both scores was dominating. But when you put it up against the Mac Pro M1, so the new Apple Silicon chip, its single core speed still was just destroying both the iMac and the i9. So we actually get to see how fast the actual core is on the M1. This is a laptop based core, right? It's a laptop based CPU. Once we start to see them design a processor uh, that they can put in an iMac, or maybe even a 16 inch, uh, I think that's where we'll see a, probably a more fair comparison and we, we're gonna see that processor just be even more dominant. But right now, single core, look at that, 1710 versus 1167, that's, that's a big jump. Now again, we see that number kind of equal out in the multi-core and that, that's because I think that the Intel gets to use its multiple threads to kind of help itself. So we, we see a, an equalization in those two machines. But the i9 MacBook Pro uh, fell, fell behind again, fell behind, so 58. Next we go into the actual compute score and this is where we see the i9s push ahead and I believe it's because of their ability again to hyperthread. So we see a 43902 metal score for the iMac versus 21305 for the MacBook Pro. So it's almost doubled. So it's almost twice as quick here. It was it was really fast. Uh, in even the MacBook Pro i9, 31. So it kind of fit in between the two. So if you're looking at this, the iMac definitely takes the cake. The MacBook Pro i9 was second with the Apple Silicon coming in third here. But it's really the first one out of all these tests that it didn't kind of place in the top. And I th again, I think it's because of its lack of hyper-threading. So still close though, but these are just benchmarks, right? Cinebench, Cinebench here, again, we kind of saw the same thing. Uh, when you get into those multi-cores, that's where the i7 or the Intel processor with the hyper-threading, so the i7 and the i9, kind of came out ahead, not by much. The iMac came out at 10,962 for multi-core versus the i9 at 77. And the MacBook Pro M1, the Apple Silicon, just slightly underneath it at 75. Actually still really close. But again, if you go into the single core, so you just see what one core is doing, how efficient one of those cores is actually working. That's where you can see MacBook Pro, almost 1,500. The iMac, 1,200. The Mac Pro i9, 1000. So again, higher numbers are better. So once we start seeing Apple bringing out, again, because this is, this is processor number one. Once we see them start coming out with, you know, not just eight cores, but 12 cores and 16 cores, we're gonna see those numbers just start jumping and they should be as efficient and as cool as this M1 is right now. So still a really fast machine and we are putting a base 13 inch MacBook Pro against these custom machines that are twice as expensive. So that's something that you have to kind of keep in mind as well. All right, next one, heaven. So this is a graphics test. And again, what we're looking for here is the higher number is better. MacBook Pro, of course, the M1 kind of came in for score wise, kind of came right in the middle. It, it beat the iMac, which I was actually surprised with. So frames per second. Uh, iMac coming in at 55, frames per second on the MacBook Pro M1, 62, and the MacBook Pro i9 coming in at 67. And, and you guys can spend some time here if you want looking at the minimum frames per second and the maximum frames per second. All of them actually pretty close to each other, uh, but the fact is the MacBook Pro M1 with that integrated graphics that is sharing eight gigs of RAM, whereas both the iMac and the i9 MacBook Pro both have dedicated eight gigs of RAM video cards. They're, they're, they're all super close. I was really quite impressed. Is it that big of a diff? No, not really. Again, this is a machine that's, you know, 1800, 2000 bucks. So that's, that's pretty impressive. Now the last one here, and this is the one that mattered most to me. And this is why, and I will say, this is a lot of the people that were asking this question was, should I buy a new MacBook Pro, the M1, for editing and Final Cut? Should I buy it over the Intel MacBook Pro? And the simple answer there was yes. And if you look at the video we did putting the new MacBook Pro 13 inch up against the old 
MacBook Pro 16 inch, you can see that there was this a huge advantage in the 13 inch. And it wasn't, you know, that it was only dealing with a specific type of file. We had all kinds of different video files in there using different codecs with different frame rates with all kinds of stuff that we threw in there. The iMac though, again, I think it's because of the hyper threading. It is just, it just chewed through it. So the MacBook Pro i9, 25 and a half minutes. And it's, it's that thermal throttling that it happens. The, the Mac Pro, the 16 inch with the i9 in it, just can't cool itself. So what happens is it just continually throttles all the way down to about it's running as slow as one gigahertz. Like that's way below its clock speed of 2.3. MacBook Pro, the M1, it, it just kind of, it sat in there and the CPU just kind of floated in that, that, that realm. Um, fans kicked in every once in a while, they'd go off. They kick in, giving us 17 and a half minutes. It was eight minutes faster than the MacBook Pro. And I think that's really the, the two that, if you're looking at portables, that's what you're looking at. Now the 2020 iMac, just kind of walked over all of them. So 11 minutes and 18 seconds. So you're looking at six minutes faster than the M1. Now, again, you're looking at a 10th generation i7, uh, 3.8 gigahertz running hyper threading. So it's actually can do 16 hyper threads. Is that what I'm, that, am I saying that right? Uh, you get what I'm saying. 64 gigs of RAM and an eight gig dedicated video card. I expected it to be quicker. And it's running in a chassis that doesn't have any real heating issues. So there's no throttling. So it gets to run pretty much at its full speed for the whole thing. And you really saw it here. I was watching that render bar go and I'm like, oh yeah, it's it's definitely winning. There's a reason that I'm editing on, on this machine. Uh, so much faster. So if I was buying a machine strictly for editing, the first question you'd have to ask, you just have to ask it, is does it need to be portable? And if the answer is yes, then I'd seriously, seriously consider the MacBook Pro with the M1, with the Apple Silicon. I know it's a 13 inch and there's some limitations, doesn't have as many USB ports on it. Get the 16 gig, it's just gonna have a bit more future proofing and you pay just that extra little bit of money, 200 bucks US I think it is to get the extra RAM. So if you need the portability, that's what I would go. If you need screen size, uh, then you only have the option of the 16. And I'd wait, to be honest with you, I'd wait because whenever they released an Apple Silicon version of the 16 inch, it's gonna be a beast, an absolute beast. Now, if you need a machine right now and you don't need portability, as you can see here, the iMac is just such a great machine. I know it hasn't changed in its design and appearance, but the, the bonus is, is you can get a 5K display, you get really fast SSD in it, not quite as fast as the one in this machine, but it really fast. Um, user upgradable memory, so we are all guaranteed whenever Apple Silicon goes into the 16 inch in the iMac, user, user upgradable memory is gone because it's all based on that system on a chip. So the memory is actually in that chip. We can't upgrade it. Big bonus of the iMac is we can actually put on the 27 up to like 128 gigs of memory if you want. That's probably just over the top for the majority, but 64 gigs, I only paid like 350 bucks Canadian, I think for 64 gigs. So that's a huge asset to it. And as we see here, it's it's fast. It's really fast, super, super compatible with everything else. And it's just, just a great machine. Um, so yeah, for me, if I needed to buy one machine, I'd probably still buy this one because I need something that's portable, on occasion at least. But if you want a machine for home, you're gonna sit at it majority of the time. I'd still get the iMac. That iMac's a beast of a computer. This. Second place, without question, and a close second. And then the 16 inch, honestly, I'd only buy that right now. Only reason I would buy it is for the 16 inch screen. If that's if that's the, the deal breaker, you need a big screen, the 13 is too small. That's it. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Hope this information was useful. Um, that's all I got for you. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Like, comment, share, subscribe, leave comments. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, we'll talk to you uh, next video. Later, my friends.